Okay, so here's the deal. You're gonna understand a whole lot of things in this video, but I have to dumb down the things to a very, very low level. This might trouble you as an experienced programmer, so have patience a little bit, but if you're an experienced programmer, you might be having patience. For rest of the people, just focus it carefully because you're gonna understand a whole lot of concept about some of the arrow functions. No, I'm not discussing it in detail, but a bare minimum example will be given here so that you get friendly with it. Okay, let's go ahead and do this. I want to do certain task on an array, but I don't have knowledge of loops right now. In fact, maybe for some reason, I even don't want to use loop. I just want to fix and do these things very, very minimally, just with the knowledge of array. Now notice it very carefully. First and foremost, I would like to declare a simple function here. So let's go ahead and say function. And inside this function, let's just call it as is even. So you might have guessed what's coming up. We are gonna try and find out whether the elements are even or odd. You're gonna pass me on an element. There we go. And I'm gonna do some testing on this. So I'm gonna simply go ahead and say if the element let me copy this so that I don't make mistake. So if the element that you are giving me and I do a modulus of it by two, it should return exactly zero because if a number is completely divided by two, it is even, that's how we check them last time I checked. So we're gonna simply go ahead and say return true. But if that's not the case, we're gonna go ahead and say return false. Okay, let's do a quick testing of it. Sure, let's go ahead and say, uh, console log and we're gonna say is is even and I want to test it with two. Pretty simple value. Let me go ahead and try to run this. Now when I try to run this one here, uh, let me just run this uh, 03 intermediate 8 array part 2.js. I try to run this, this gives me true, fairly accurate. When I try to run this one here, again let's try to run this, fairly accurate. Okay. Now let me show you a bit of minimalistic code and you're gonna see this a lot. People like to just shrink their code a lot and you're gonna learn that eventually, but there is nothing wrong in this code. You can 100% write it. I recommend beginners to write this level of code because eventually you adapt to smaller code. So what I can do is I can actually remove this false here because I don't need it. Now notice here what's going to happen. And in fact, I can just keep it all of it so that you have this one, comment this out. Now notice here, what I'm gonna say is, I'm gonna say I want to return something, and I just want to return that whatever the element you give it to me, if I module it by two, I should be getting zero. Now the advantage of writing this single line of code is that, that this situation is always gonna evaluate as either true or false. And if it evaluates to as true, that means number is even, and if it evaluates to false, that means it's false. So technically this and this line of code is exactly the same. This is a little bit trickier and eventually you learn to write these style of code with experience. No hurry in that. So we see false and we go ahead and see two and this is gonna come in as a true. Okay, no big deal so far. Now, as I talked to you in one of the earlier video that what we can do is actually we can call a simple var keyword. We can put up an equal sign and write a function. This is like holding the entire thing inside a variable. But also, what you're gonna notice that sometimes we don't even write this function keyword, but rather we insert an arrow here, literally equal sign and this greater than or smaller than, however you see that. So we literally use this arrow and this is exactly the same code. It has syntactically and to be honest, inner working, there is nothing different. This actually makes our life a lot easier in many of the cases. And we're gonna understand this a little bit later, but by inserting this arrow function in this one liner of code, notice what happens when I even remove this return keyword. Now save this and let me show you something. This is, this is important. When I run this, it says undefined. When I go back here and I add this return keyword, now it's gonna give us the true. Again, we are going to discuss about this undefined later on. Right now, I just wanted to say that Yes, it is required to have a return keyword because it's an arrow function. Now coming, moving on to the point. Now, so far we know about there are functions. We can hold them into a variable. We have these arrow functions and sometimes when we don't put return keyword, they give us a bit of a headache there. But there is another type of function known as callback functions. These functions don't have any name, but they are super helpful in some of the situation, the situation which we are about to handle in a second. 
Okay, enough of that. So that was all the base that I've created for you for to understand that what's about to happen. Okay, now we're gonna comment this out. So there we go. Now we have a method, let me close this down. And we have an array. I can actually declare a variable and hold the array, but I can actually do it directly as well. So there we go. And eight. So I have this array, and as soon as I put dot on it, I can use all the methods of an array, like a push, I can use unshift, shift, and everything that's there. One of the very interesting methods that you should, and I think every programmer should be aware of, is array. As soon as I put this every, notice here, there it says something known as callback fn, that is callback function. So we can call pass on a callback function, and the values that you can use in it are number, index, and the array. So these are the three things we can use. Right now, we're not gonna use any one of them, but just the first one, which is the value that we are passing on. So what this array, what this every actually does, it goes into your array and look for every single element. And whatever you are gonna say inside this array, it's gonna do that test or that operation with every single element. So if I just say is even, is even like this, it's gonna take every single element and will run a test on this here. Okay, that's what it does. Notice here very carefully, I'm not saying is even like this. I'm saying is even. And this is the difference when you don't want to run the function, rather you want to pass on a reference onto that. So that whenever this every goes on to every single method, it knows where to look for the function. We are not running it, running for it, okay? Now, let's just say that I want to store whatever comes up as a result. I'm gonna hold this into a variable result and I'm gonna simply go ahead and do a log of result. There we go, save this, open this one and let's go ahead and run this one. Notice it comes as true. The true actually came because every single element in this is actually giving us a result of true in the case of is even and that's where every is actually super, super handy. Now, let's go ahead and try to run this as three. When we save this and run this again, it gives me a combined result of false. So this is checking for every single element and if all the elements are passing our test, then only it gives us a true result. If one of them actually fails us, so this is what we are having. Again, this is not the only case of every that we are having. We can have many other scenarios where every can be used and many other such methods are there. You might have heard about map, filter, and we're gonna talk about them in the separate video, but this is just one case. Now coming again, taking you on to another world. Right now, we don't have knowledge of loop, but still, I was able to perform certain tasks on every single element because I studied a bit more in depth about the documentation of the array. That is why I recommend you to spend some time in array. Don't be in a hurry. Okay. Okay. So now the next thing that I want to show you here is exactly the same. Whatever we have done, this is it. But we want to do it a bit more modern way. The thing which you actually will be doing in all of the React, Angular, a whole bunch of other things as well. Now we want to write the exact same code, but we want to have a look on how these callbacks are actually returned. So notice we have got 2368. This is the array and this is entirely the code. I'm going to copy that, comment that out and writing this. I just want to write it a bit shorter as a code. Right now, I have to go back, write a function, and pass on the reference up here. You can actually avoid all of this if you know how to write callbacks. Let me show you how is, that is being done. Now notice, I'll remove the reference of is even. Then in order to write the callback, there are actually a couple of ways how you write the callback. In 2020 and onwards, you'll be writing the callbacks which are arrow functions callbacks, especially ES6 and ES8 and moving forward there. So, you need to understand them right now, right here. How to write a callback? A simple function which doesn't have names. So make it a habit, pair of parentheses, an arrow sign, and a curly brace. But there is a little bit more here, little bit more. Okay, first, let's understand the basics of it, then we're gonna go for more of it. Remember, two, three, six, eight. So the result expected because of the three is false. That's one thing. Here we are expecting an element E or element and we are modeling it by two and then returning a zero. So let's do the same. Expecting an element, call it X, Y, A, B. We are calling it E. Here I'll come here and I'll hit an enter and I'm gonna say I want to return. Whatever the element you give me, I'm gonna module it by two and I'm gonna give it a zero, compare it with zero. Now let's see what is the result that comes in. 
the result comes is the false. Let's go ahead and try it with four so that we can be very sure that the result is coming up good. True, that's fine, okay. Now let me show you something more which a lot of people just say, ah, oh, that was not expected. In a lot of cases, you are not going to use the return keyword. Whenever you are not using the return keywords, that means you should not be using these curly braces. So remove the curly braces, which technically makes it just a one line of code. Of course, I have to remove this one. This technically makes it a one line of code. Again, this is exactly same what we have written in the past, but this time we don't want to use curly braces. And that is why we are using this E here and parenthesis, just like this, exactly same. Okay, now let me show you that if I run this one again, this has nothing to do with the code logic. This is exactly same, but this is the biggest problem that everybody faced. Do I have a shortcut to remember this? Yes, I do have a shortcut. So previously we were writing this, so let me cut this out again. Let me show you. Previously we were writing this and this was the basic ideal arrow function. Whenever you put a curly braces, you got to return something. But in case you don't want to return something, still want to remember the syntax, remember these guys. They are always there to help you to save the day. So in here, what you can do is whatever the element you are expecting, I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna say E is gonna be module by two and we're gonna get is equal to zero. This is much more an understandable syntax compared to when you have nothing there. So when you use these parentheses, then you don't have to write the return keyword. If you have to use curly braces, then you have to write uh, the return keyword. Now, when I'm gonna save this, probably chances are high that these braces will be get over or will be removed from my uh, onboard here. This time not, but sometimes they are automatically removed because of my extension in the code editor. But again, if I run this one, this gives me exact same result and I can test it out for all the things up here. And I don't even have the knowledge of loops till I'm able to do all of this. I know this video can be too much for a lot of you to understand the syntax, but I've tried my best to actually dump it down the most easiest way so that you understand the things. You avoid a lot of bugs in the future while you'll be coding in React or Angular or any other framework. So this will help you. Again, the knowledge of this every keyword is super important. That's why I have tried to give you this entire lecture. Don't worry, we're gonna talk about the loops as well later on and it's gonna be much more fun, but I think this was also too much. So let's keep the video short and enjoy your iced tea and I'm gonna catch you up in another video.